Congressman, good morning to you. Um, so we just got word that a gallon of gas, gas prices just hit $4.25 a gallon. The previous record high was $4.11. So we have passed that. We need to get gas prices down fast. How do we go about doing that? Well, we unleash American energy. We unleash our natural resources that are here. Keep in mind that over a year ago, we had energy independence in this, in this country. And if Ukraine teaches us anything, it teaches us the importance of energy independence to national security. We understand now, and we understood before. Look, I'm, I'm old enough to remember the late 70s when we were too dependent on OPEC in the Middle East for our energy needs, and we set out to achieve energy independence, and we actually achieved it. And then this administration took over, the Biden administration, with their war on fossil fuels. And what has resulted? Now we're dependent on other countries for our energy needs, asking them to pump more to help us out. Now we're having to buy oil from dictators in Venezuela and Saudi Arabia and Iran. That is not America. We have the resources here. We just have to simply turn the switch on and unleash our energy sources here. Yeah, Congressman, you know, there is a, a reporting in the Wall Street Journal that the Biden administration tried to set up a phone call with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to see if they would increase their oil production. They didn't even take the phone call. So is the Biden administration going to get into a place where he has to pivot and he has to start uh, encouraging drilling here, here at home? I certainly hope so. You know, I always like to say that it's never too late to do the right thing. And that is the right thing. Yes, it's going to take a while to ramp up. It won't happen overnight, but we need to do it and we need to do it now. And we need to always remember the importance of being energy independent. In fact, we had achieved energy dominance over a year ago. During our administration, during the Republican administration, we were actually exporting oil. We had to change legislation here in Congress in order to be able to do that. But we had achieved that. We threw it. We didn't throw it all the way. The Biden administration threw yeah. it all away. Yeah. And, you know, I'm wondering, because a lot of people talk about how oil trades on, on the futures market. So if the Biden administration signals, listen, we're going all in on energy independence. We're going to restart the pipeline. We're going to drill. How quickly could gas prices go down? Well, it, it could be a matter of days, a matter of weeks, and certainly this will help the stock market. It will help everything. I mean, that encouraging sign will, that, that we are going to do the right thing finally, that will help our economy. There's no question about it. And look, these gas prices, they are impacting the people who can least afford it, the working class, the, the, the middle class, those people, the, the single mom who's having to buy gas to drive to work to provide for her family. Those are the people who are hurting the most by this. The upper class, they can afford it, but not the middle class, not the working class. Yeah, I know. And the uh, president has made it very clear he isn't going to raise taxes on people making less than $400,000 a year. But you look at gas prices just going through the roof, and that is a tax. And yesterday during President Biden's speech, he said that the best way to cut energy costs is to go electric, buy electric vehicles. So the president's solution to this is for people who can't even afford gas in their car to buy a $60,000 electric vehicle. How is that realistic? It is not realistic, and, and Joe Biden is not living in a realistic world. I mean, this is simply ridiculous to think that someone could afford that. Mr. President, we need you to do the right thing. It's never too late to do the right thing. Turn the switch yeah. on, unleash the natural resources that we have an abundance of here in America. Let's drill here. Yeah, and I know that you have legislation that would restart the Keystone XL pipeline. That would be complicated, though, because uh, it, uh, the pipeline was uh, run by a Canadian company. So how would you go about doing that? Well, certainly we could pick up where we left off and, and yeah, it would be complicated, but at the same time, it can be done and it has to be done. I'd much rather get oil from our neighbor, from our northern neighbor, our, our friendly neighbor in Canada than to buy it from the dictators in Saudi Arabia and Iran and in and, and, and Venezuela. That's not where we should be patronizing those companies in those, in those countries. We should be getting it from Canada. If we had continued with the Keystone XL pipeline, we would have found ourselves in a much different position right now today. Yeah, and you even have Democrats like Ilhan Omar, Bob Menendez saying, we don't want to get oil and gas from Venezuela or 
or Saudi Arabia either. So certainly more to come on that front. Also, uh, Congress just reached a deal on the $1.5 trillion government spending package. One of the headlines is that they were able to do that without a fight. The other is that uh, $13.6 billion is going to help Ukraine. Uh, do you support this spending? And, and how exactly uh, would that Ukrainian aid money be used? Well, as of yesterday morning at our conference meeting, that we understood that, yes, some of it would be used for lethal weapons and, and to help the Ukrainians. Obviously, it would be used to, to, to help those who are fleeing the country, and, and that's important. But keep in mind that the package that was explained to us at conference yesterday, yes, that's a package that I think that we could support and that I could support. It included the Hyde Amendment, included um, increase in defense spending. If none of that changed during the day, if it remained basically the same, then yeah, I, I think there's something that we can all coalesce around. Yeah, and I know that there's this um, big conversation, big back and forth going on right now about the MiG fighter jets. It, it uh, kind of developed overnight. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that, the Biden administration and the Pentagon saying that they don't want those MiG fighter jets to be dropped off at a U.S. air base in Germany to then be sent to Ukraine. But Vladimir Zelensky has made it very clear that he needs those planes desperately and now. Well, he does need them now. And, and again, this is a situation that perhaps could have been avoided. It could have been avoided if we had responded early. We knew Russia was going to do this. I was in Europe two weeks ago in, in Brussels and in Munich, and we, we knew it was imminent. I was over there on the 22nd of February whenever Russia did invade full force, and we knew this was coming. If yeah. we had provided them with more weapons during that time, then they could have defended, defended themselves even better. But, you know, this was a surprise from the Polish government, from the po um, the people of Poland, and, and, and I hope the administration right. will look at it carefully. I know that Zelensky does need that. That's that right. air power will help them tremendously. Congressman Carter, thank you so